Hello everyone, Mecha here. Welcome back to Don Don's Fire Emblem 7 Hector Heart Mode 0% Gross Playthrough Chapter 26. As usual, when we have a longer map with a defend or a survive objective, I am not alone. I am with a guest and today I have for you the one and only Marky Joe. What's up, dude? I uh, pretty good. Just woke up. Uh, and now we're watching this. <laughs> Yes, now we're watching a defense chapter. We're watching the Vida chapter, the most exciting chapter in all of FE7. This is a chapter where you literally have no place to go or to defend. The only thing you have to do is not get fucked up. You just need to stay alive. What, what do you think of this objective? Like, I, I don't understand what they were trying to do with this chapter, because it's like... Like, Vida is, like, all super powerful and stuff, but she just kind of chills, and so, like, you're- all you do in this chapter, essentially, is just try to win a staring contest with her. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she's, like, she's actually, like, really pumped about fighting you, too, but for some reason, she just kind of sits there and just kind of goes, Oh my god, I want to fight so bad, but then she doesn't move unless you get in her range, and as a result, for most of the chapter, you just sit there and don't get in range, but that doesn't mean we don't do anything in this chapter. There are actually a couple things that we have to get done and over with. One of the things we did is promote um, Farna, as promised last chapter. She was recruited but not promoted yet. We used that new and fresh Allegiant Whip. And um, we fielded some units that don't really help very much with completed objectives yet, but that do have some work to be doing. Uh, that includes Urk, Lucius, and that includes Barcher, who still needs to promote. But I think before we get into them, we should probably talk about these new these shiny new units that we just got, especially Pence, because Pence, I think, is the one unit that everyone in the community agrees on is super awesome. Like, I cannot think of a single person who thinks Pence is bad. Have you ever met such a person? Uh, no, I haven't. In fact, one of the reasons why I, you know, why I identify as a sage in my avatar or whatever is because the first time I saw Pent dishing out damage in that desert chapter, I was just like, oh, dude, that guy's so awesome. <laughs> like, he inspired me. Yeah, I remember I read, like, a guide on IGN long ago that was talking about, like, giving those units ratings out of 10, you know? It's like, all right, um, Marcus, 3.0, because he's a filthy pre-promotes. Uh, Lowen, 7.0, because he joins early and he's a good cavalier, you know, that kind of guide. And even that guide gave, it gave like, Hawkeye a 5.0 out of 10. Uh, I think it gave, uh, what's another pre-promote that joined somewhere? Um, I mean, Wallace Isadora? got a low rating up. Isadora, yeah, Isadora got like a 4.0 or something. Pent got like an 8 in that guide. Everyone loves Pent. Even people who hate pre-promotes love Pent. And really, there's no reason not to love him. I mean, A-rank tomes, A-rank stabs off the bat. High enough bases to one-round everything. And you would think such a unit would be a glass cannon or something, but no, he's pretty bulky. Yeah. He takes so many hits. Way too more than he has any right to. Yeah, I always found that weird that, like, he, he actually has, like, decent defenses and stuff. Like, why? <laughs> what were they you thinking? You didn't need that! <laughs> I, yeah. It's, it's especially bad when he's in range of Louise, because Louise gives him an A support automatically from the start, and that gives him plus three defense and resistance effectively, as well as, um, I believe it's half avoid, because Pent is ice and Louise is light, so that's like plus 12 avoid as well. The Wife Riders in this chapter, for a lot of it, have Iron Lances, so they're still going to hit Pent a fair amount of time, but I think he actually survives like two to three hits depending on what attacks him, which is just insane. Like, if you compare it to like Sally from FE8, Sally is like also more bulky than he has any right to, but Pent is like even more bulky than that. It's really, really quite insane how strong he is. As for Louise, well, I basically just described her entire utility as supporting Pence. I don't think we'll often have enough units slots to field her. I mean, she's a sniper in a pretty enemy phase heavily based game, and she doesn't have a whole lot of durability or any other initiatives. Like, we don't even always have something to do for Wrath in this playthrough, and he is like a mounted version of Louise, so I don't think you can expect a whole lot of her. I don't think she ever gets deployed again, but I might be wrong on that. Donald hasn't told me, and I don't want to be spoiled, but you can expect a lot of Pence, and maybe a little bit of Louise in this playthrough, I reckon. Right. Uh, no. do, you, do you like Louise? I uh, I don't really have much of an opinion on her. I know that her supports are good. She's like... The, the big thing between Louis and Pent is that, like... If you look at their supports, Pent is kind of just kind of a boring Mary Sue. And, like, Louis kind of has that perfectness too, but weirdly enough, it works better for her. She <laughs> comes off as more likable and stuff. 
but like it's like the exact opposite gameplay wise. Louis is, you know, an archer. Do I need to say anything more? <laughs> like, especially in this game, where as you said, yeah, it's like very enemy faced focused. So it's like, what are you doing in this existence of realm? I know, right? I, I, I still. It's pretty hard to find someone who actually like hates Louise for her character, I think, though, despite her apparent per perfectness. Um, anyway, before we go deep into banter territory, we should probably cover the essentials of what needs to be done in this chapter. Uh, you notice Pent is just murdering a bunch of wyverns, mostly just to reduce the time it takes for this chapter to complete with all these guys flying around. Um, you'll notice that one of them flew in a particularly strange way, he just kind of flew next to the castle. That spot is what I like to call a wyvern convention, an invisible wyvern convention. There's two of these spots on the map. There's one uh, like way down south as well. And enemies in this chapter have a weird AI, the wyverns in particular, where they want to convert to a certain point unless they can attack a player or character. In that case, they'll just like go straight for them, of course. But if they don't have anyone in range, they will just convert at a certain point in a map and not move from there unless they're given, they're like, they're, like lured away. And I find always find this funny when it happens in this chapter, because what you can do, if you want to, is undeploy almost everyone, undeploy Myrna's especially, and try to make it so these wyverns just fly towards that spot, never getting their range, and that trivializes this chapter. It's especially useful in draft races, I think, potentially, if you figure out the pattern correctly enough. I, I cannot really think of many other examples of AI in Fire Emblem where this kind of thing happens. Um, I, I know what happens on Victory or Death as well, with the wyverns in that chapter, but other than that, I don't remember any such, like, convention-like squares happening. Do you remember any of this stuff? I really don't remember any of it. I don't, but I might have an explanation for why they go over there. Uh-huh. Probably because, like, oh, for immersion oh. purposes, we have to make them conquer the castle, so let's just have them go over there. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, but I mean, this is Burns Castle, and these are Black Fang troops. They're in, like, co cooperating with Burns, so I don't know what's the deal with that. But yeah, if you ever want to, like, not fight as many things as you want in this chapter, for example, because you're trying to play it fast, then messing around with that might be fun. As for what we're actively trying to do in this chapter, besides survival, which is trivial, we need to gain EXP on our guiding ring users, specifically Sarah, Urk, and Lucius. Not only because these units need to be trained for staff purposes, but also because there is a route split coming up in the next chapter. Uh, this is the Kenneth versus Jeremy route split. The Kenneth variant of the next chapter is much more preferable to go to because that one is a seas map, whereas the Jeremy variant is a route map and takes much longer and it also is much more tedious to watch. So for that reason, we're trying to give kills to Lucius and Urk and we're trying to staff grind with Sarah whenever we can. We've also been grinding Priscilla up, but for this chapter we're taking the opportunity to deploy Sarah instead, since in this one her lower mobility doesn't really matter, but in other chapters it usually does. Kanaz doesn't count towards this requirement even though I just said Guiding Ring. Uh, he's an exception because there are four Guiding Ring users that need to count versus four Hero Crest users, and those are Raven and Bartra in particular. Now, when the chapter started, the XP split between those two categories was... It's pretty favored towards the Hero Cresters actually, because we've been grinding Bartra a lot. He's just hitting level 10 as I'm saying this right now. Raven has also been trained and promoted. We we benched him for good, actually, uh, ever since his last deployment, but he has been trained for five levels and then whatever he got after promotion. And Dorcast and Gi also contributes to the count of XP towards Hero Crest users. Not a whole lot, but they were around for the early game, and they did a couple of things back then. So, um, at this chapter start, the XP split was 1842 for the Hero Cresters versus 1547 for the Guiding Ring users. So what that means is that we have about a 300 XP difference. By the end of this chapter, that will be flipped around completely. We will have 2680 for the Guiding Ring users versus 1996 for the Hero Crest users. So that's like a 700 deficit for the Hero Crest users. So we did make some big ground here, but we needed to. We did need to like, get rid of that route objective, because fuck Jeremy chapter. <laughs> that chapter sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I hate the Jeremy chapter so much, it's so bad. Uh, also, speaking of the Guiding Ring guys, uh, Lucius and Urk, they need to use their C rank weapons to do enough damage for kills sometimes in this chapter. I don't know if it's come up yet, but they need to. And for this purpose, we actually had to grind Lucius' light <laughs> light rank. So uh, for that purpose, he's been using Shine a couple times in previous few chapters because that gives him two weapon XP rather than one. It's not something that comes up at all ever, I think, light rank on someone. I think the last time I heard of it was like Saul grinding light rank so he can use Purge in some chapters in FE6. But other than that, I don't know if I've ever cared about light magic rank in Fire Emblem overall. 
It's kind of just the magic that's the most there. <laughs> it, it's just like, it doesn't have any of the cool, fancy gimmicks of dark magic, and it doesn't have the goodness of anima magic, so it's just like, what are you even doing here? <laughs> Why are you even here? Yeah, no one likes light magic, no one likes, especially not in GBA games, no one likes that. Um, other than that, uh, Marcus is working on shaking off some uses off of his silver axe, similarly to how we like grinded down a killing edge earlier, as well as a javelin. Uh, we need the silver axe to have a certain amount of uses. Donald actually refused to tell me what it was for, so I cannot tell you that. But I do know that Marcus is unnecessarily using a silver axe for that purpose. Ooh, I think I have a theory. I mm -hmm. think in a later chapter, he wants the Silver X to be a sp at a specific number of uses so that, so that it will break at a specific time and cause Marcus to equip another weapon. I mean, that is exactly how we used, like, low-use weapons before in this playthrough. Uh, I know Market Joe hasn't gotten to some of these chapters yet, but you definitely are in for a treat if you're expecting that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, there's, like two side objectives that we have to get to in this map that we actually have to work towards. Uh, one of them is the hammer and village in the bottom left of the map. The hammer is a useful staff that can repair weapons. V7 doesn't have a whole lot of things that you might want to repair besides maybe the warp staff late game, but even that is questionable considering how little you need warp in this game, although I'm pretty sure Donna's going to do it. Uh, other than that, casual players might want to repair something like the wolf beal or something, but that's one thing you got. There is one other objective that we're trying to work towards. It might not be obvious already, but first we have to promote Bartra. Actually, promoting Bartra is also important because he needs to be level five warrior, not just level one. So uh, we use the Earth Seal from Chapter 24 to promote him, and uh, now he's a big boy, and he, he still doesn't gain any speed. Unfortunately, <laughs> he still only has three speed. So that's that's a slight drawback, I guess. That's that's not great. That's like. <laughs> God, dude, <laughs> why? Look, it's like, you look at his beefy arms and then you look at the 10 strength and you're like, what is that made of, air? Did he just have like an inflatable thing shoved into his arm, just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not great. It's not great. It's, it's, it's not great. Uh, the unfortunate thing about promoted Bartra is that even though his stats are a little bit better, he now gains like absolute nothing for killing stuff. Um, and because of this, like, it's basically the same thing whether he chips or kills someone, and for that reason, for the rest of this chapter, whenever Bartra can attack someone, we're generally just gonna feed the kill to someone else. For example, Ellie Wood. He, um... Donna wasn't sure at this point in the game whether Ellie Wood needed to be fed kills or promoted or not. Uh, I think he might know that he needs to be promoted, but he wasn't sure, like, how much XP he needs to be fed to him here. So he, prior he prioritizes killing with Ellie Wood over killing with Bartra now, because for Bartra it's basically the same thing whether he kills or not. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, so there's like one more objective in this map, believe it or not, and uh, I'm wondering if you're familiar with that objective, Marky Joe. Do, do you have a guess at what it is? If I were to guess, it'd probably be getting the shop over in the top right, maybe? Yeah, but, uh, you know, that shop is, uh, is kind of dangerous, you know, you, you might not want to go there. It's kind of a, it's kind of a dangerous looking shop, isn't it? Is it dangerous? I mean, Pence been wiping out these Wyvern Riders left and right for the past how many turns? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, 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 hold on. Is Vida over there? Yeah, Vida, in this mode, she's over there. I think there's some cases, I'm not sure if it's Elliwood Normal or Elliwood Hard or Hector Normal. She's over on the other side, and uh, that makes it easier to visit the secret shop. Makes it harder to get the Luna from the Shaman in the top left. I'm not sure if he's dead yet. So, where, it, where you want her to be is questionable, but if you want to visit the shop safely, then you definitely do something about Vida. Now, we've oh. been working on getting rid of the wyverns around her, but there's some wyverns next to her that you cannot get rid of without triggering Vida, and uh, triggering Vida would be pretty dangerous, but there's one person that is able to uh, somewhat comfortably fight Vida, and I think you know who it is? Pent? Uh, no, I think Pent might actually get one out by Vida. I'm not entirely sure, but he's definitely not the most reliable at it. <laughs> Maybe it'll be like Louise. <laughs> like, she just so happens to have the exact amount of speed needed to not get doubled or some crap. <laughs> I think she gets O code, even with the pen support. Louise is like 28 base his feet. Like, the thing that makes Vida so dangerous is like, not only does she have really good base stats, but she has the Uber Spear, as it's known in the fandom. It's the spear that gives plus something in every stat to represent that, uh, or like, she gets used stat bonuses basically because Nurgle used some kind of super magic on her that makes her very powerful and eager to fight. 
Uh, right. I think, among other things, she gets like an HP bonus, which is weird because it doesn't display when she's fighting someone. It looks like she's missing a big chunk of her HP, even though you never damaged her. Um, I always thought it was kind of odd about the Uber Spirit. It makes you look like you're damaged, but you're really not. But yeah, anyone who fights Vida is generally going to be dead, with the exception of one person. But uh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I think I have, I think I know who that one person is. Oh shit! No one. Like, oh. you, you just visit the shop on the last turn, and you're just like, screw you, Vida, I'm not even gonna fight you. Okay, but if you visit on the last turn, there's like an enemy phase, right? That, oh, like, that's right. That's kind of how this game works, right? Yeah. Uh, I should also mention this while it's sort of relevant. The lords are all force deployed in this chapter, Hector, Elliewood, and Lin. And keeping them safe can be kind of difficult, both in speedruns and draft races. Donna actually told me he was building up supports with Lin and Hector. Never got it, but he kind of tried. But, uh, okay, there's that oh. one person fighting Vida. Here you go. All right. I mean, Hawk, you know, he does have a lot of HP, so I guess that he would be the ideal pick. Yeah. Hawkeye has a lot of HP, uh, a decent amount of defense, weapon triangle, and if I'm not wrong, he's on a fort right now. So, even though he gets doubled because Vida is much faster than he is, and Hawkeye only has like 11 speed, same as Marcus, he does just fine. And over the next few turns, he can move towards the mountain range to get even more avoid. Um, on a mountain, he won't get fort healing, but mountains are still like super good for berserkers to get avoid on. Because they get 40 avoid, which is insane. And now Vida is further to the left, but you can see she's still in range off the shop if you were to visit it with someone, so we have to lure her away even further with Hawkeye. Uh, it's a little dangerous, but as long as Hawkeye has some kind of healing item, or maybe physicking from Pence, uh, he can survive just fine. I think Vida might have a crit chance on Hawkeye, which is a little bit unfortunate, but her chance of hitting him, I think even... I'm not sure from the top of my head whether he survives a crit at full HP or not. I, I'm lost on the numbers right now. But, uh, um, I don't. Yeah. I don't think he survives a full crit because, like, one attack takes off more than a third of his health. Oh, did it? I didn't catch that. So you might be right then. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's true. So I do know. I think. I think he survives being attacked twice. And I think that's what I was remembered. He, rem he survives a double attack. So yeah. in order for him to die, he needs to get like, he needs to get crit in one or two hits. Or he needs to, like, get hit and then not heal himself enough, which can happen. I think Donna told me, like, even though he was using a Vulnerary on Hawkeye, uh, he was, like, at a risk of death on the turn he uses a Vulnerary because Fighter does take off a lot of his health. Yeah. Uh, that looks pretty close to me. <laughs> he just yeah. took, like, 18 damage per hit, I think, is what it was on a fort. But, uh, you know, that was, like, me doing on-the-fly math. I'm not entirely sure that that's correct. But, yeah, I, uh, I Hawkeye beefy. I, I assume the reason why you're not using the throne is because that brings Vida too close? Uh... Yeah, I think Hawkeye just wants to go into the mountains. I'm not sure if the throne gives him more avoid and defense. Um, that might be true. Like, I think Vida, if she attacks like, from the bottom right compared to the throne, then she might be interfering with the armory. But that, if it was so, it would be like barely. I guess you'd also like quickly mention, uh, before I forget, that uh, Isadora is fighting Wyverns with an Iron Axe. Weakening them just enough for Urk and Lucius to like turn into like a little bit of an HP grind machine for them. Uh, Urk and Lucius both end this chapter at exactly the amount of HP, uh, same amount of XP. They both get exactly to level 10 points 23, which is cute because they both get to promote that way and start grinding their staff ranks up. Lucius gets C rank staffs on promotion. Urk only gets E, so he has more work to do. But I'm pretty sure they don't both need to reach A rank, thankfully. So we don't have to see too much staff grinding in the next few chapters. Wait, 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 they don't need to get A rank? What are they going for, then? Um, well, there's, like... Uh, so, Warp is, like, the best, like, mobility staff in the game, obviously, but you might also need, like, Rescue, which I believe is B, and, uh, I forgot what the other requirements were. We're about to, we'll see that in the future chapters, I guess. I, I try not to spoil myself on what Danan is doing in future chapters too much. Um, maybe they need to, like, do barriers while other people need to do warps. I, I can only speculate, really. All right, sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Kanas giving Farina, Farina, the the fucking mercenary Pragus is right or some healing. Wow, yeah, he really quality commentary <laughs> from me. <laughs> Kanas finally hit D rank staff, so he can actually use Ment now instead of doing that stupid heal thing. Yeah, thank God. I, I think like the magic zone is C rank, right? Because you can spam barrier. Yeah, Barrier is a huge relief if a staff unit can hit it, because um, you can use it every turn, regardless of whether someone is damaged or not. And um, you can buy the Barriers as well, and you don't need to be in Fog of War, like with Torch, for example. So the, the higher you get, the easier it is to get more staffing. Of course, the higher you get, the more rank you need to get up to the next level, because 
Uh, to get from E to D, I think you need like 30 weapon XP, and then from D to C it's like 40 or something like that. Uh, it kind of increases every level, but um, yeah, the, the E rank is the stuff to get out of. And then once you get to C, you're pretty good in general because yeah. barrier spam is easy. You're right. Yeah. The anyway. other thing is the other thing is that oh, go ahead. Yeah, shopping time. I'm sorry, but we have to talk about shopping time. So normally, like. This is the only shop in the game, for the most part. There's a couple of others, just like the, the Dragon's Gate Secret Shop. But this is the main armory, where you can buy killer weapons before the end game. And normally people would be like splurging all their assets on it, bring the silver card, getting like as much as you can. Don Don gets one Killing Edge, one Killer Axe, and then three Hand Axes, because apparently those are more important. Well. Uh, I think he didn't have the funds earlier to buy all the Hand Axes that he needs. And there's one unit that joins later that uses up a lot of Hand Axes over the course of the playthrough. Of course, Hawkeye uses them as well, and it's also one of the best weapons for Marcus. So that's why he needed three more Hand Axes. But yeah, only two Killer Weapons. Man. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess he wants a reliable strategy and killer weapons, you know, they're kind of inconsistent on how often they crit, so maybe he just didn't want too many. Yeah, I think he just, for the most part in FD7, you can get away with using iron or javelins to kill the enemies, and he does already have a killer axe from Hawkeye, but yeah, that's chapter 26, completed in uh, 11 turns. We will see you next time. See ya.